Miss Craig Whispered Storyteller here, and I hope you are well. So tonight it is nice and cozy. It is around 2 a.m. and I cannot sleep, so I decided to begins on a dark, stormy night in a small, cozy home far out in the English countryside. Inside the house, Mr. White, his wife, and their grown son Herbert are gathered around the fire, just like what I am now. And outside the wind howls and the flames flicker, casting long shadows on the walls. The night feels restless as if something strange is going to happen. You see, they're expecting a guest, an old friend of Mr. White's, a Sergeant Major Morris. Now Sergeant Major Morris has just returned from years of serving in India. This is way, way, way back a hundred years ago. And when he arrives, he brings with him stories of distant lands. And there's something else, something far more sinister. So after a few drinks, Morris pulls out this object from his pocket. It's a small, dried up, shriveled, thing like a like a little claw but it's a monkey's paw and with an air of mystery Morris explains that the paw has been cursed by an old Fakur which is a holy man from India the Fakur wanted to show people that fate rules our lives and that those who interfere with it at their own peril. So this poor, he says, has the power to grant three wishes to three different people. But be careful, he says, the wishes come with a terrible price. Mr. White, curious and intrigued, buys the paw from Morris, despite the Sergeant Major's warnings. Morris tosses the paw on the fire, but Mr. White quickly rescues it. It's just a bit of fun, he thinks. After all, what harm can a little superstition do? leaves. The white family are left alone with the monkey's paw. They joke about what they might wish for, not totally taking it seriously at all. Herbert, with a grin, suggests that his father wished for something simple, like 
hundreds of pounds to pay off their mortgage. Mr. White, his father, laughing, holds the paw in his hand and he makes the wish. I wish for two hundred pounds to pay off the mortgage. And nothing happens. The room is still. Mr. White shrugs it off as nonsense. But as the firelight dims and they go to bed, something feels off. Strange. Weird. Now the next morning life goes on as usual, but there's still a strange tension in the air. There's a knock at the door, and it's a man from Herbert's factory. His face is pale and his hands are trembling. He brings terrible news. Herbert has been killed in a tragic accident at work. It was the machinery and there was nothing anybody could do. expresses their deepest sympathies and offers compensation. And that compensation is exactly £200. The family are devastated. Herbert, their son, is gone. And the eerie coincidence of the amount of money they receive shake them to the core. Could it really be the monkey's paw that caused this two hundred pound, this tragedy to happen? Could their wish have caused this tragedy? Well, days passed, and the grief consumed the whites. One night, Mrs. White, wild with sorrow, remembers the paw, and she begs her husband to use it again, just to wish Herbert back to life. Mr. White, horrified, refuses at first. He's been dead for ten days, buried. You don't know what you're asking for. But Mrs. White was relentless, and in the end, he gave in. And with trembling hands, he held up the monkey's paw and made his second wish. I wish for my son to be alive again. The house fell silent once more, but the wind outside grew fierce and the night darker than it ever had before. Hours pass. And just when they were starting to lose hope, there was a sound, a faint, slow knock on the door. Mrs. White, frantic, ran to the door, but Mr. White held her back. Whatever is on the other side of that door, it is not their son. Not as they would remember him. He felt that in his heart. But the knocking grew louder, more insistent. Mrs. White struggles to open the door, but just as she pulls back the bolt, Mr. White makes his final wish. He picks up the paw and the knocking stops and the door swings open to reveal nothing but the cold, dark, empty night. In the silence that follows, the poor lies discarded on the floor, the three wishes spent and the price had been paid. How about another ghost story? How about the ghost in the mirror? Well, there's an old 
superstition about mirrors and some say they are portals to another world a world where spirits linger watching us waiting for a chance to cross over now this story begins with a woman who just moved into a new house a house that had been empty for years and i mean this place was old with creaky floors and a sense that it was frozen in time. In the bedroom she found an antique mirror, very tall and ornate with a gold frame covered in dust. She thought it would look lovely once cleaned up, so she hung it on the wall. And that night as she lay in bed, she glanced at the mirror and everything seemed normal until she noticed something strange. The reflection of her room was slightly off. It looked the same, but there was a shadowy figure standing in the corner just behind her. She whipped round, but the corner was empty. Her heart racing, she turned back to the mirror, and the figure was still there. She covered the mirror with a sheet, but every night she could hear faint whispers like something or somebody trying to get through. She moved out the next day, leaving the mirror behind, and some say it's still in the house, waiting for the next person to look into it and see what she saw. Was the ghost in the mirror. Let's see what else we have. So we've got one here called the Midnight Visit. So the Midnight Visit is the story of a man named Tom who had a long drive home late one night. The road was empty and the moon was hidden behind the clouds so the only light came from his car headlights and there, those headlights cut through the dark, narrow road that was lined with trees. As he drove, he saw a figure ahead, a woman standing on the side of the road with her thumb out hitchhiking. She was pale, her dress was soaked as if she'd been caught in the rain. Feeling sorry for her, Tom stopped and offered her a ride. She got in gently, her hair hanging in wet strands across her face. She gave him an address in a soft, whispery voice, and they drove in silence. When they reached her destination, which was an old house on the edge of town, Tom turned to say goodbye, but she was gone. The passenger seat was empty, and the door hadn't opened. Confused, he knocked on the door of the house, and an elderly woman answered, and he described the girl, told her about the address, but the woman's face went pale. That was my daughter, she said quietly. She died in a car accident on that road many years ago. She was hitchhiking to come home. Did you enjoy that one? Well, here's another one. The Crying Boy. This might be my final one tonight. So, The Crying Boy. There is a story about a painting. A painting that nobody wants to keep for long, and it's called The Crying Boy. And it's a portrait of a young child with big, sorrowful eyes and tears streaming down his cheeks. The painting, which was popular in the 1960s and 70s, has a dark reputation, and it is said whoever owns the painting will soon face disaster and tragedy. So, 
The legend started in the 1980s when a series of house fires in England had all but one thing in common. The crying boy Pinton was found amongst the wreckage and the smouldering ashes completely untouched by the flames. Every other item in the home was completely destroyed, but the painting survived, unscathed. People began to believe the painting was cursed, and then claimed that the boy in the portrait was no ordinary child. But he was a restless spirit instead, bound into the canvas himself, causing misfortune to anyone who kept it. Now some say that they can hear soft sobbing at night when they have the painting in their home. The sound of the crying boy trapped forever inside. Did you hear that? To this day, nobody knows the true origin of the curse, but many refuse to keep the painting for fear of what might happen if they do. Okay, that was the last one. And anyway, some of those stories were very good. Some of them were very meh. But still enough to create a nice Halloween ambiance.